So what would you, should we call this brave new world that you've whipped up for us? Flashpoint. How's it going guys? El Stevo here. Welcome to the new studio. Makeshift studio just for this morning. Kids aren't at nursery yet. This is an early one. I've just watched episode one, season three of The Flash. Flashpoint and wow. Uh, what can I say? What an episode. Uh, I'm a little bit out of breath. Been setting up the makeshift, makeshift studio. Got quite a bit to get into, so we're just going to go uh, straight away. Uh, what a return to form this episode was. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Let me take it down a notch. What a return to form this was for The Flash. Um, we all know season two was a little bit uneven. Um, still a good season, but in comparison to season one, very uneven. If the premiere of season three is anything to go by, Season 3 is going to be a magnificent return to form for Barry Allen and his team of nerds. Uh, we open up, Barry, he's been sp he spent three months in his new life, uh, he's happy as a pig in shit. Um, as far as he's concerned, everything is absolutely perfect. He's got Nora and uh, Henry, um, he's just asked Iris out on a date and she said yes. Um, you can immediately tell the connection between them two, um, I think. In any timeline, um, Barry and Iris will always find each other. Uh, obviously, Wally's kid Flash is um, having daily battles with Edward Claris, uh, the rival. Not doing so well, but Barry's kind of intervening and helping him out a bit. Uh, obviously, we get to the point where Barry, fight, um, Barry reveals his identity to uh, Wally. And basically, Wally and Iris are a brother-sister crime-fighting team. Um, that's pretty weird, out of Wally's apartment. Fantastic. Um, basically, he's got earbark 4 and reverse flash locked up uh, in a cell that dampens his speed. Brings in Big Belly Burger, obviously. We know reverse flash loves his Big Belly Burger. Um, the dynamic between those two is fantastic. Um, Matt Letcher is fast becoming the epitome of reverse flash for me. Um, he... He's the ultimate reverse flash in my eyes. He plays the part absolutely brilliantly. He's the perfect foil for Barry Allen. Um, and it is actually at the point in this episode where Barry is, is the villain. And uh, reverse flash, he shouts it, that at him as well. But deep down, um, Thorne knows that Barry's going to need him. I think, I think we all realise that Flashpoint couldn't last. Barry starts to, whenever he remembers things about his old life and his old friends, he starts to lose his memories and Thorne explains to him that basically the more he uses his speed the more he will lose his memories and eventually the timeline will set in concrete and that will be it. Um, Barry will never be able to change back, he won't have his speed, that will be it for the Flash. Uh, Barry's not too happy about that. So what have we got? I've got my notes here as usual. Obviously most people are doing alright in this um, Flashpoint timeline, Cisco's a billionaire. This, uh, he remembers getting vibrate through the heart, so whether he's still vibing in this timeline is a possibility. Caitlin is a paediatrician eye doctor. Uh, Barry does try to get the team together, um, and they do they do the speed camera thing. So there is still that um that connection between them, but obviously he needs to go back and change the timeline, doesn't he? And he does in the end. One person that isn't doing so well in the new timeline is Joe. Um, there's a bit of roles reversed from the first series. In the first series, if you remember, um, Joe was always um, sticking up for Barry, telling the boss where he was because he was always running late. Well, in this timeline, Joe is a drunken stumble bum. Uh, he's always late for work. He loves his whiskey. Barry uh, basically flashes into work. And Joe's like, well, hell, are you interested in me? Uh, basically, it's because Barry he cares about Joe from a past timeline, doesn't he? And Joe doesn't realise this. Joe comes good in the end, though, when he shoots the rival. We'll get to that. But Joe realises that Barry and um, Iris and Joe aren't talking in that timeline. And uh, Joe, he's, he's a little bit lost, bless him. I think it's probably because he didn't have Barry around all those years. Uh, who else? Wally, obviously, they go... For, when. Barry explains the flashpoint to them all. They team up. Um, Barry and Wally go to fight the rival. 
while he gets his ass kicked, gets a pipe put through him, uh, he's mortally wounded. Um, the rival whips up these tornadoes, that I think is obviously that's going to happen. Uh, the rival unmasks himself as well, he says he's not that worried, and he takes his mask off and introduces himself as Edward Claris. So at least in the new timeline, um, Barry's got a little bit of a jump on him because he knows who he is. Um, Barry, in the end, Iris gives him the usual pep talk through the comms. Barry defeats him. He turns around. The rival's about to get Barry. Joe shoots him in the back. Um, Barry reveals himself in the new timeline. Basically, by this point, Barry's getting a lot weaker. He's losing his memories. He's losing his powers. Uh, so basically, he just goes to Thorn. And this is the immortal conversation. I'm going to spit this conversation word for word because this must have been the hardest thing for Barry Allen to do in the whole three seasons. He walks in and he goes, says to Thorne, you know what I need you to do. Thorne, yeah, but I want to hear you say it. Barry, I need you to kill my mother. Thorne, with pleasure. I hate you. I hate you too. But I wonder which of us is right sometimes. That was an epic little tete-a-tete -tete between the two. Um, like I said, the rapport between these two is perfect. They bounce off each other. They are the perfect villain-rival combination. But as Fawn says when he takes an alien Barry out to change the timeline, sometimes he wonders who's the villain. And he's kind of right in this situation because Barry, basically, he was the villain, keeping Fawn locked up in a cage, although he brought in Big Belly Burger and Curly Fries. That's pretty cool. If I was locked up in a cage, I'd want my, I'd want my Big Belly Burger. My big belly stack, you know what I'm saying? Um, it's like 8.30 in the morning now, all I can think about is burgers, yo. McDonald's breakfast, I think. Sorry, sidetracked. Thorn, obviously, he, he's been locked up. Barry's kind of the villain. They go back to the scene. They stop the other timeline happening. Thorn knives Barry's mum. We must have seen that scene a dozen times now. It never gets old. The actress who plays Nora Allen, she she must she nails that scene every time. How many times have they filmed that scene? She absolutely nails it every time. Go we go back to um our normal usual timeline. We go to the Allens. Happy days, Wally, Joe. Barry, while having a bit, or quickly before Thorne leaves, he says, everything's perfect for me, maybe not for you. So it's, there's going to be some changes to the timeline. We'll find out very soon after that. They chink some beers to um, Henry Allen. And uh, Barry goes, where's Iris? Joe stomps up to bed, pissed off. Wally stomps up to bed, pissed off. Just as he goes up, Wally says to Barry, you know that they don't talk. Dun, dun, dun. And there you have it. That was... Flashpoint. Episode 2 is called Flashpoint Paradox. Um, so we're going to see what happens. Obviously there's been change to the timeline. Um, then obviously the post-credit, the pre-credit scene, you've got Edward Claris being woken up by a mysterious voice. And then alchemy being scratched into the mirror. Obviously Claris is going to become the rival in this timeline. And we're going to have alchemy and him team up. So that's going to be pretty fucking cool. Um... That was that was Flashpoint, and for one episode, I think it was pretty damn awesome. Um, there's some people, well, as you've seen from all these video makers, there's been videos made and made, like, there's been so many videos about Flashpoint, and so many videos, I made one video, there's been so many videos made about the Flash Season 3. It's here, we can review it, we can break them down, we don't have to watch these videos anymore, predicting what's going to happen, it's here. Um... Obviously, there was a lot of Easter eggs in this um, episode, so I'm sure other people will break those down for you. I'm not DC expert. I'm just here to review the show. I'm not a nerd. But I am a nerd, but I'm not that much of a nerd. So I'll leave it to the other channels to break that down for you. If you check out War Stew, it'll, it'll do a good job of that. Um, what a return to form for the Flash, guys. Um, like I said, season two is a bit uneven, but Flashpoint was personal to Barry. They absolutely nailed it. Uh, the cast nailed it. I'm really looking forward to season three now. Uh, hopefully we can keep on this level. Because it's going to be good to find out what's, what the changes have been made to the, the timeline. Um, I'm glad the reverse Flash is going to be starring in a few episodes of Legends. I'm glad that he's back to normal. He 
obviously we've got the rival and the alchemy but the reverse flash is always going to be a form get it here about form in barry's side fuck it now i'm too good um but yeah that's it everyone's gonna be back to normal we're gonna be back with the the nerd crew um obviously harry's gonna be back at some point so uh, i'll see you next week for episode two review flashpoint paradox take it easy people from the makeshift studio over and out peace out enjoy your week folks bye bye